All right, thank you so much for the programs to hear this morning on ITV. Now, we've got uh, Mr. Austin Adigwe. He's uh, joining us via Zoom. He's in Lagos. Uh, so he's a stakeholder when it comes to uh, the petroleum uh, issues in the country. So we're well, first and foremost going to be talking about uh, the uh, cash uh, withdrawal policy just uh, released by the CBN because it's, it's a general issue. It's a public opinion issue. So uh, we look at that first before we talk about the fuel crisis, how it relates to what is happening in Lagos, whether it is the same thing uh, the way it's happening in, in, in Edusta here. Now, Mr. Austin, I think good morning one more time. Okay. Now, uh, just uh, this morning in Benin, we saw various reactions uh, as it relates to the recent, uh, you know, CBN withdrawal policy. I don't know how Lagosians are reacting to it in Lagos too. Okay. So the um, new procedures for cash withdrawal. Have you got what you're talking about? Yeah. For customers that have been paying uh, the COT, I mean, they pay, uh, you know, some form of uh, uh, monies uh, for bank transactions and all that. Now, you're asking the same customers to start paying a uh, percentage if they withdraw more than uh, the stipulated amount. Is that not asking for too much? So the fact that you don't necessarily have to withdraw above that stipulated amount, what do you need in cash for? Is it for decoration? It's just as a medium of exchange. You should also understand that cash in its liquid form is non interest bearing. It is not any asset. So you still don't have much need for it. But should you require should you require that volume of cash, then you must be able to state what and what that cash is required for. Mm. You see the challenges we have, the security challenges we have around. In one way or the other, are financing all the mandatory terrorism and all the comfort, all the comfort, all this kind of cash that you have outside the banking system. I don't think that's going to create any problem, but if you go to advanced countries like UK, America, you don't actually close your hundred uh, hundred dollar bill for every single transaction. No, even the law as it stands now requires that you don't pay cash for any transaction above five million. That's the law. So I think CBS got to try this time around. We need to strengthen the banking culture of Nigeria. And of course, every change will come with its own cost. But I believe that the benefit of this new policy will outweigh whatever cost that we're looking at here. Okay. Now, uh, you, you, you talked about a while ago that uh, should you uh, withdraw uh, more than that uh, stipulated amount, that's when you have to pay uh, what you're supposed to pay. But let's look at it in a more practical terms. Because you're telling somebody that uh, you should not withdraw more than 100,000 Naira on a daily basis and more than, uh, let me get my record straight now so that I don't give you uh, maximum withdrawal. More than what? Hello? Weekly, 
okay, weekly. Now, is that not too much of a small amount compared to, I mean, looking at it from the angle that Nigerians, uh, the way they want to spend money? Because we are looking at a situation whereby uh, people involved in some form of development, uh, you know, building houses and all that, they have some wages to pay and that they need to carry large amounts of money, uh, you know, to uh, where they need to pay. So is it going to be feasible after all? What we have just described is the old method of building things. The large amount of cash of carrying also a source of insecurity on its own path to you that is carrying that cash. We are saying that the worker can be paid. You can actually do the electronic payment into the respective account. Now, you, you, you might be surprised. In Lagos, there you have some markets like Latimer Market and Funding Market. That you want to argue that okay, uh, those traders are not well uh, educated, they might not really appreciate electronic transfer. But go there for part of 10,000, 15,000. This trader will need to do a transfer into their account. Nobody wants to be carrying cash on and around. It is not ideal, and if you want to be better, this is one of the areas that we have to pay the price to get it right. Okay. Mm. How do you also react to uh, the part of uh, the, the information now that only 200 naira is going to be found in ATM machines uh, from uh, the time the policy is going to start? That's beautiful. In short, when the came up with this idea of designing naira, I was one of the voices against it. I felt that what was needed was not actually to redesign naira or to demonetize the higher currency. Take out from 1,000 euro notes, take out 500 euro notes, make it 200 euro notes the highest currency. But now, you see, what we are saying here is very simple. Do not actually do so. What is going on that might appear to, to be like a compulsion on Nigeria to use the bank? But you see, having 200 or 100 euro at the highest, highest denomination, we now make it even more convenient for Nigerians to use financial services. But there are also talks yeah. that, yeah, there are talks that uh, the 200 naira uh, note or denomination now uh, seems to be uh, the lowest uh, denomination in terms of availability. That most times you go to banks, you don't find them. Now, the CBN is on the verge of uh, trying to redesign the Naira notes. And, of course, uh, they are also telling Nigerians again that uh, uh, if you go to ATMs now, that the only denomination that will be available is the 200 Naira notes. So how do you think Nigerians can put all this together? Of course, uh, the monetary authority has balanced all this. See, what they are trying to do is very very Reduce the preference, the public preference on cash. That's a country that is still found wanting in terms of uh, technology. Uh, because some of these things we are talking about now, it, it is going to border on the uh, technological preparedness, if you like now, or the technological well-being of, of Nigeria as a nation. I mean, we have, you know, suburbs that uh, uh, 
they probably don't have uh, banks uh, there, and of course they need fiscal cash to run their life. Uh, so how do those kind of uh, set of people, how do they fit into uh, this uh, policy now? Yes, of course. Um, but I want to tell you that hardly would you find any part of this country that um, because of the um, emergence of fintech, you see periods of repentance everywhere. So, obviously, number one, let me number one, talk about uh, assurance or reliability of the alternative payment system. Mm. I think that you need to start before you begin to talk about whether this will actually take you to where I'm going to or not. If you continue to start, you will never start. Yeah, we're not talking about the payment system now. We are talking about the attendance implications, uh, the, the, what we fall, the fall, fall out of it all. Uh, because uh, are you sure Nigerians are ready? Is it not going to do more evil, so to say, than good? That's what we are looking at. No, the, benefit, the benefit of this policy, I can assure you, the benefit of this policy outweighs the cost. Of course, there's a lot you see where you bring change, when you bring change, it will disrupt the open order. Mm. There will be some discomfort here and there. But I'm just telling Nigeria, I'm an economist, I understand what's playing out here. The penalty at the end of the day will outweigh the short-term uh, inconvenience or cost that we might be looking at. And for those in the suburb, I believe that as the implementation uh, processes are going on, there might be regimes where it becomes so glaring that financial services cannot get to certain areas. But again, you talk about financial services getting to uh, the rural areas because you still want them to remain cash dependent. Mm. If we strengthen our internet services, you have the USSB, there are a lot of options there. We can always transact even in the villages using this alternative option. Now, when criminals understand that you no longer keep money at home, they will stay away from you. There are so many things you need to begin to look at. From the economic standpoint, it is good. From the security standpoint, yeah, but, but don't, you think, don't you think the federal government ought to have, uh, you know, uh, handle a whole lot of issues, uh, security and all that? Because we understand that the criminals you talked about, uh, criminals even go around with POS machines these days. And, of course, transactions are done, and not even the CBN, not uh, maybe authorities of the federal government has been able to uh, really handle the situation in that regard. So, after all, the way uh, criminals are also... Uh, getting more technologically inclined is also something that the federal government has not been able to handle, don't you think so? Okay, uh, so, no, I, I agree with you. It's not, it's not uh, the case of the uh, uh, federal government performing their rules and every other thing not working. No, I agree that Nigeria is challenged. Nigeria is in so many areas, particularly leadership. And that is why we are in this kind of situation. Okay? okay. But we should also agree that we don't have to get everything right before policies are implemented. What the BIA is doing is, is really all that policy management. And it is a particular responsibility. There is no way to be established CPM that requires them to wait on the certain period or the certain things are done. It's just a responsibility. That's how they feel they will handle these um, challenges of the um, currency management. Okay. In terms of security, no, I, I agree. Mm. The, the criminals are also getting sophisticated. But don't also forget that there are electronic signatures mm. when we do certain things online. Okay. For cash, Everybody drill. Oh, so that's okay. the minor. Yeah. Okay.
Yeah, we understand that the policy is going to start uh, to be in effect from January 9th uh, next year, 2023. How correct is that? Yes. Uh, from, so the, the whole process will kick in on the 15th of December. Those are 500, the old 500, uh, uh, 200, and the 1,000 uh, notes. This is to uh, the um, uh, legal tender from 34th of January. So that is the window for depositing the old notes into your account okay, for future withdrawal. Okay. All right. So let's uh, quickly attend to uh, the other topic we have for today now because our time is fully fast spent on this uh, program. Uh, we are looking at uh, the lingering fear crisis in parts of uh, Nigeria. Now, uh, you live in Lagos, uh, in Benin here. Uh, the cheapest fuel you can get now is um, sells for like um, uh, 230 naira for uh, independent marketers. That's the cheapest you can get. Now, for major marketers, uh, you still have 170, 179, and all that. Now, what is responsible? Because Nigerians are kind of confused. They don't know what is going on. Uh, we hear different talks here and there that um, the private depot seems to have taken over, uh, you know, the sales of, of fuel. What is the situation, Mr. Adigwe? Okay, I think the perennial when One of the factors seems to be uh, the non-availability or the shortage of uh, forex or foreign exchange and all that. But uh, uh, there are talks that private depot owners now seems to be in charge of fuel, uh, you know, sales of fuel in Nigeria. Uh, don't you think really? that government needs to look inward? Uh, because uh, the, 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 yeah. the reason is that a, for, for a country as big as Nigeria, okay, to rely on NMP solely to import this product that is also this important. Okay? Mm. Makes us look like an unserious, unserious people. NMP doesn't have to stock as we speak. They don't have to stock. Does NMP even have the facility to hold the stock of petroleum product that will pass this country for one month? The answer is no. Nigeria suspended the free market clause in that clause. 
All right, so we, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we just uh, opened my, our lines now for callers uh, because we also have that segment too. Uh, so call us one or two calls, one or two calls, 0708365132. Uh, you just tell us one or two things about uh, the lingering fear, uh, you know, situation in the country, and also the new uh, cash withdrawal policy just released by the CBN. One or two calls, zero seven zero eight three six five one three two zero. One or two calls uh, for our viewers out there uh, this morning. All right. So as we expect uh, uh, the calls now, uh, Mr. Austin, uh, uh, great. So uh, uh, let's the fear. So is it the same thing in Lagos? We buy, we buy uh, 230, 235, 240, 215 Benin. We, is it the same thing in Lagos? Lagos, Lagos, I have bought for 216. In Lagos. 216. 216. 260. 216 Naira. 216 Naira, yes. Wow. In Lagos. All right, so I'm afraid that's all time we permit us to take on the show now. So a very big thank you, uh, Mr. Austin Adigwe, for calling into the program this morning. Thank you for having me. Okay.